as the second best challenger team behind themselves. Hmm. So Maple Street has a lot of respect there. Or Lomo Street, if you know him from live. Yep. <laughs> I mean, that's great. And you kind of saw like the rivalry between Team 8 and LMQ because Lomo, of course, comes from the wonderful Vasily, and it's it's a great... It's, it's a meme that doesn't get used enough, I think, in League of Legends. So guys, raise your... You've owned up to it. Yeah, but raise your Lomos, guys, because it's really... <laughs> it's it's the way to live League of Legends here. Uh, Picks and bans coming through, though. Kale dropped away from Team 8. You know Kali Jules would love to play that champion. Syndra and Yasuo dropped out as well. And we'll see how the rest of the bans go. Yeah, and area effect is a little different than the last time we saw them because they made it all the way to the, uh, the round of eight and got 2 0'd by Law Pro. Even though they lost, they still had really good scores, but since then they've replaced two of their members. Chump John and Pat are out, and Arenko and Mikasa are now in in the top in jungle. So yeah. we're going to see a little bit of a different teammate coming out here because Pat had very aggressive calls, whereas Elements and the rest of the team likes to play a little more cautionary. So I was talking with Pat, and he was saying, I like to be very aggressive. I like to be up in their face and create a lead early, but the team is very reserved in their shot calling. Well, it's interesting because the guys who have been best for area of effect is actually their AD carry Evan RL. Yes. He's got like a ludicrous like 10 KDA despite his team going two and two in the last summer series. And so if you're like, well, it's 4.10, AD carries are big, let's play passive. You get a Tristana or a Cog mod at six items, you're going to win the game a lot of the time. Oh, yeah, and he's really good at those hyper carry champions. Evan RL is known for that. Like you said, 10.6 KDA for him. Being, being uh, two of those are losses, two of right. the games. He had yeah. more losses two and two. than the people who were above him in KDA. He's fourth highest KDA in Challenger last series, which is a big testament to his skill. And even in losses, he doesn't die is the big thing. Mm. And he's a good he's a good AD carry player for that one. Of course, Elements will be supporting him, so we'll see how that lane matches up. Our bands come through a lot of the... Uh, Mid lane, top lane bans aimed at teammate. A lot of mages dropped out, but no jungle bans at all. So you yeah. consider those purpose pops dropped the Lee Sin in there. Does he even care with the Lee still in the pool as well? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Can probably hand that one over to Porpoise Pops. California Trolls does play that a lot. Mm -hmm. And Cali Trolls, there's a big story about him. He was a Fizz only top laner for the longest time. Like, that's how he hit challengers. Fizz, Fizz only, Fizz only. I'm just going to go Fizz over and over again. Does he play Fizz? I think he plays Fizz. Okay. But he's since dropped that, picked up Kale before it was popular, way before it was popular. He was a Kale top laner, mm -hmm. played a bunch of carry tops. The Nidalee loves just carrying from the top lane, and he was the hinge on which teammate swung. And when they lost to Necrofantasian previously, he was on Malphite up against the Soraka, so they didn't have the burst that they needed. Yeah. So teammate, they've since gone back to the drawing board, and once again, it is a best of one, so you have to draft as best as you possibly can right now. See if they can grab that. Of course, Lee Sin already picked up. Going to hover the rest of the champions in a sec. Area of effect do get that Jax top lane plus the Ziggs mid. So AoE already had this great fallback pattern of Jax split, Ziggs wave clear, and they can wait for late game. Yeah, and I should have taken my previous point back because Team 8 will usually always pick California Trolls uh, champion first unless they are red side, then they'll usually pick it last. They want to get him on something immediately that's top priority, top pick for them. Interesting. Well, we got to see, of course, the AoE not picking up a jungler just yet. They could pull a complexity and just grab Elise Lee Sin. We've seen this before, but maybe they'll make it work. Heck, they grab Oriana as well. They're really just running their composition. Yeah, they're running. Mm -hmm. Nope. Okay. No, it's okay. I take it back. That completely makes sense, though. <laughs> Maple Street, last time we saw him up against LMQ, he played a lot of uh, Caitlyn and Lucian. It was just back and forth between those two. So it's no surprise to see him on that champion once again. And early game aggression, definitely the case here for these guys. Lee Sin versus Jax. We did just see Westrace win that matchup. It's uh, one that I think you're kind of supposed to win just barely as Lee Sin. So, uh, of course, Kylie Trolls picking into it should yeah. be okay with this. The Lucian, one of the, I think, the premier laner right now among top tier AD carries. So, you talk about teammate wanting to get out ahead early on. They definitely got yes. the chance for it. They want the hyper early game champions here. And the top three picks that they've already gotten showcase that immediately. That's the game that they took off LMQ mm -hmm. when they went 2-1 against them in the Challenger series about two series ago. Yeah, they spring one. Yeah, they ended up... Spring two. Uh, spring two. Yeah, two series ago, they ended up with a very hyper early game composition and they kept LMQ down right from the get-go. Well, it looks like they actually might be allowed to kind of keep pushing in. Looks like Area of Effects still looking for more late game champs. Their Rangar does come through, at least he can play make in the mid game to keep them afloat. But Tristana, known for a very weak mid game lull. Some teams have been able to play around it, some have not. That gets picked up for Evan RL. Yeah, and Arenko actually played Rengar back in the round of 20. And he went 7 0 7 on that. Undefined KDA or 14, if you'd like to go ahead and throw that in there. So he had a really great showing. And he's previously from 
team Green Forest. So we've seen him before in the Challenger series, just not on area of effect. I want to see how he meshes with this team because these are two new additions between Mikasa and Orenko True. up against Team 8, which has been together for a while now. And they've been through a lot of hardships as well as success. Yeah, and I mean, they're hoping that this continues the success train here if they can make top eight. Basically, if they want to make it to the LCS promo tournament, they're going to have to get almost for sure uh, top four in this tournament. They're going to have to make it to the quarterfinals and very likely have to win the round after that. So Lucky for them, though, they are first seeded on the ladder, so yep. they will avoid one of the incumbents of the top three if they win this match. Yeah. And actually, to be fair, the same thing for Area of Effect here. If Elements wants to go back into the LCS, he's only got one point from Series 1. So both these teams' hopes rest on this game winning it right here. The rest of the picks come through. Braum support for teammate. Oriana mid lane there for Slushy. And AWE to make their last choice. Yeah, the Braum pickup now really big and be able to keep Maple Street safe. And they didn't go with the uh, uh, the Twisted Fade was banned out from them. They didn't go with the Nocturne as well. We saw them hover over that previously because they played a global comp. But now they're going with this composition that has a lot of early game pressure yep. all throughout it. And then hoping Slushy can farm like a madman, which I've seen him do before on Orianna. Just take Wraiths go mid, take their race, go mid, just keep doing that back and forth, and then have that late game presence. Now, Air of Effect, they have more scaling here, sure. all across the board. Oh, yeah. So it's an early game composition for Team 8 versus a scaling composition of Area of Effect. Yeah. There's a, there's a timer on this for Team 8 if they don't get an early game lead. They need to crush early if they want to walk away with a victory, and Area of Effect need to play it safe, need to use their reserved shot calling and not get over aggressive. Well, they've got to make sure they play it right. They've also got to be able to react to the teammate aggressive plays because you yep. know the look for them. I mean, you've got so much playmaking potential that's it's really the battle is how fast can you break down the wall before the castle gets built there? That's what I'm going for. Actually, what? Am I seeing things correctly? Trundle just got locked yep. in there. Yep. Not Nami. Mm -hmm. Please help me with this one. I can't. <laughs> um, it might be a uh, support Rengar. No, it's it's a support. It looks like it's a support triangle. I, I trust here. there's not like a weird graphical error I've never seen before. Like I, so Elements is known for his off tier support. It is Elements is known for his off tier supports, right? It is it is actually Trundle. Like yeah. I, I I just had to be sure. Yeah. The guy played uh, support Nautilus before, if you remember from he back in the day. Sticks before it was popular. True. That was actually good to be fair. Yes. Nautilus it ended up stick. being good. People well, gave him a lot of stuff for it previously. That was good. Nautilus, yeah. no one went for, and they're like, you're just crazy. Yeah. Um, Trundle, I mean, what else do you say here? It's Trundle support. You He's going to be tanky. It's a best of one. He's whipping out all of the stops. Yeah. You can steal stats. You can okay. buff your Tristana in the late game with your subjugate by using it on somebody who's tanky, make them less durable. Mm -hmm. You can steal some AD. If you get close, you can use some displacement. I mean, you can stop Relentless Pursuit with a perfect pillar, but there's a lot going in here, and Trundle's very item dependent. Yeah. So. So 21 defense. We first have to of all. See, we have to see how it ends up. Yeah, he's definitely going the defensive route right now. He opened pillar level one as well. So here's the things like my thoughts with Trundle, right? So first of all, Trundle would work with someone like Yasuo because you get you get a knock yeah. if you put it right on top of him. Um, as far as stealing stats though, like I guess it'll work against Braum, but that's kind of it. Uh, his ulti would not get blocked by it. Everything else yep. is melee, so that doesn't matter too much. It does allow him uh, sort of displacement and sort of movement control to allow Ziggs bombs to hit more. But it's just a very, very strange situation. I just have to see how it plays out because he has almost no lane pressure doing this. I wouldn't even be surprised to even look for a lane swap. Yeah, and the fact that they picked these two champions that don't have any lane presence for the most part, like Tristana's early game is actually Her pretty good. Her laning is fine. Her laning is good. But when you combine it with a trundle, and most of the pressure in the lane will come from your support, considering most AD carries are pretty on parity with each other, unless you're Caitlyn and you just outrange everybody. This is a really big boon here for Team 8, if they can push this early aggression. But at the same time, you have to be a little on guard and think, what is AoE doing? What do they want to do? It's very hard to get a read on it, and they might lane swap, but they'll give up a dragon. That's true, unless they have some weird miracle way of stopping it. We have not seen that so far, though. Lane swaps have turned into Dragon every time. Every team gets taxed 925 gold for lane swapping. And so we don't see it as frequently as before. Looks like AoE are sending the duo lane up to the top side, so that will give time for elements to uh, farm up a bit. And the funny thing about this as well is so many times we see supports leave the lane early, let the AD carry solo up there, get solo XP. And if you're Thresh or Morgana, that's fine. You press a Q on someone, you're useful no matter what. Trundle, you mentioned this before, Trundle is pretty heavily level and gold defended. And so if Element's like level three, nine minutes in, he is not useful. Yeah. 
That's a really big thing there. Using the tunnel for some vision, but that's about it. Now he's going to go top lane. And the question is, do they fast shove or do they try to freeze it and deny? Because it's Tristana. If he's putting points in his explosive shot, he's going to shove naturally. If he avoids that, then he can go ahead and farm up. Sure. It's a thing to watch for. I know when a cop played uh, Tristana yesterday, he didn't learn an inexplosive shot until level 5. Actually, he kept points out of his uh, skills and said, okay, well, at some point, get the explosive. But he wanted to freeze for a while. So it's certainly up to the player to decide how he wants to play this. Ooh. It's like Trolls will get the red buff, start there, and look at this. Wow, an aggressive play there. No, 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 this is normal. Yeah. This yeah. is where the dual lane is. I got... So used to seeing 1v1s. I, I know how this works. Wow, 1v1s back in the game and everybody forgets how they go down. And now, Renko and Mikasa, they need to go for this red. They're going to be a little bit behind, but at the same time, these are... Actually, both sides have really good turret pushing top laner and mm -hmm. junglers. True. And uh, yeah, AoE took kind of the, the slower sort of yeah, greedy right. path where they took a bunch of smaller cans for one for the buffs. They're not going to try defending against this dragon. It is going to go to Team 8. We're going to see how well Dodo can... Uh, dance the aggro there with Dragon. Maybe we'll see them take more or less damage putting in the skill here. But Rengar Jack's happily just being a buddy in the jungle. Yep. And the first Dragon is worth a lot of gold now. And if they can get it, turn it into even more of an early game lead. See if they can do with it. Boom. 900 gold into their pockets. Okay. Well, teammate are sitting at about a seven to 800 gold lead right here. So what you expect from the Dragon take. Mid laners holding equal. Looks like MNRL and Elements have reached the turret here. And they're actually putting some decent damage on, putting a pretty decent amount of emphasis on this turret losing health. You see it's down to one yeah. third right now. The Minion Wave doing some decent damage as well. So, heck, they can enter the turret for this pretty quickly. Yeah, they're going to get it very quickly through Tristana and also the fact that you can chomp the turrets. We saw Element just biting away at it. Got to have some strong teeth for that. Yeah. Like he's made out of stone. He bit it so many times, and, you know, his mouth is still there. The bite has not lost any damage here, so... Well done to him. Uh, AoE still clearing away the northern western jungle. No one's stopping them. So this push could mean the turret in the very next wave even. Yeah. And they have to kind of answer it because they're down about a thousand gold now. Just because of the dragon and the laning just overall. Mm -hmm. So when you do lane swap, you have to take the turret as fast as possible. Try to beat the bottom lane taking your turret since now all the turrets have damage reduction on them. Yeah. Beat them. Push it faster. Lane swap back. So now they are down a turret top lane and you just go ahead and be like, okay, you got Dragon, we got a turret, and now we're just playing you two on two bottom, and the playing field is even, and we avoided that really, really bad early game or the advantage that you had early game. Absolutely. And so far, that's kind of been the case there. The 900 gold, we're going to see if that means much when this turret falls uh, eventually, or if they set up a freeze or whatever, because there's ways to, of course, force a freeze in your lane if you manipulate the minions properly. Mm -hmm. See if that ends up being the case. Mikasa and Aranko still walking by. Pink Ward is down. That's going to actually be spotted, but they, they do go for it. All right, so early ward punished very quickly out of teammate. Fun fact, Rengar Q hits a ward twice. Hmm. Interesting. Not Don't know if it should, but it does. <laughs> I, I didn't actually see that happen, so I the trust you. His savagery hits it twice. If uh -huh. you use a Q, it hits it twice. All right. And they're standing right on top of a ward. And they get spotted, and a lot of health goes down. This poor Rangar, the dodge comes out, and the stun oh, does the go exhaust. through. Aranko does dive it out. Corpus Pops forced to run away. He flashes out away from the pillar. He's staying safe so far. Exhausted Mikasa. On one both. hit to go. Flashes in, finds the kill. But now he's in the wrong spot of the map. Kali Trolls, Dodo 8 showing up for this one. Can they kill him in time? Stun comes out. One more hit, and a second kill goes in. Team 8 finding the enemies in the jungle. And a big thing about this lane swap, too, is they wanted to keep California trolls down because he's such an aggressive player in lane he looks to crush you and run away with the game he is the hinge on which team eight swings and when you lane swap it he's got nine cs at six minutes because he's been farming jungle but if you give him kills like this you completely negate the entire lane swap and what you were looking to accomplish in the top lane yeah and you can even see the turret health as well not even a good spot for aoe mikasa's turret down here very low a couple hundred health in this one of course teammate did defend their own top lane turret so just a dragon and an extra kill there, putting teammates' uh, required good early game in a good spot. It looks like it's going to be a Blade of the Rune King start here for Maple Street on 4.10. Okay. Becoming the standard start on Lucian. Mm -hmm. It's very, very effective. Increases calling shots, increases everything. He uses his passive twice. And the buffed uh, Rune King is great. We got TP to the bottom lane. They're actually just lane swapping it so that they have their two-on-two -two in the top lane. Interesting. Okay, so 
They are going to hold the two on two up here. I want to see if AOE react well, to this in any time because they are recalling Evanarel. He's down an item right now. So yeah. I believe he could pick up BF Sword on this recall. Um, this is the right no? move okay. after winning that fight because now you have your top laner, who's a little bit better now, going with the pickaxe and the longsword, yeah. straight into a longsword ruby crystal. Oh, sure. So yeah. you have an advantage here if your teammate. You have a red buff. Off that. Exactly. On Lisa, so. Exactly. You don't want to mess around with that. Oh, Mikasa chooses to jungle instead because facing Lee Sin is just too much of a, of a fright for him. Dwarves Clot, level 7 on Zig, 62 CS, holding pretty equal. Slushy, interestingly enough, not going Athenes, has the components of a Morella Namacon for his first item, and as long as his team can control blue buff, that'll be fairly safe. He's going to go for more AP and less gold overall required. Aranko going to be spotted going to top lane, level 4 on him. We're going to see Maple and Dodo just running away. Should be safe. Root will miss. And I, now we get to actually see what support Trundle can do. He's actually in a lane now. Yeah. I don't know what he can do. I flat out have no clue and Never I'm really interested it. in seeing what elements can do with this. Something Finally he's kept died. very, very secret. If it is something that's efficient. Just captivated. What's he going to do? Man. What's he going to buy? Early damage coming out. California Trolls pushing the jacks away. You can see yeah. the lead at work right there. Turret does go down and Cali Trolls 250 gold for that turret because, of course, he gets the local gold just for himself. It's going to snowball that lane even farther. You're seeing now a 2,000 gold lead. Team 8 have been making great choices early game. Yeah, and the fact that Lee Sin has the Tempest Cripple to be able to slow the attack speed of Jax in the early game, he almost has twice his CS. He's approaching that little cusp. He has this wave pushing up. No, it's going to allow Mikasa to get back a little bit, but it'll still be about a 10 difference, maybe 15. Well, Emma's looking for a fight one more time. Chomps takes a bite out of Dodo, but doesn't do all that much. Ultimately, Maple Street still able to hold his team in a decent spot. Cutlass for both these guys means plenty of sustain. And so no real health loss for the AD carries. They're going to continue to farm with uh, really not much difference between the two. Yeah. In Cali Trolls, he actually went to go ahead and farm the Wraith, or the White, and he's just using his pushed up map pressure to go ahead and get camps, deny some from Rengar. Don't know how much it's going to deny, though, because Renko is now level six, and he's looking for that first gank with on the hunt. That is going to be the big risk. Went back and bought, got himself the Spirit Stone and the Boots. Has the red enough so that once he gets that first leap off, he'll be able to stick to somebody and blow some flashes and chase them down. But what's he going to do with it? Dragon is live, second dragon of the game. And the teammate aren't in a position to get to it just yet. They did actually call Dodo back. Uh-oh. Aranko, he sees Porpoise Pops. Porpoise Pops sees him. He knows he's around. That solid snake stuff going on there. He's in a cardboard box. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to look for the same reference, but no, nope, doesn't need the box. This one just walks back north. Maple Street, though, getting CC'd a lot. The slows are there. Two more hits, and there's the kill picked up. Evan RL takes him down. And support Trundle. Yep. Just saying. Yep. Oh, oh, two. It worked. It worked. Big thing there is Dodo abandoned top lane and said, Maple, you solo farm while we go get Dragon because we'll have a numbers advantage because it's two in the top on one. Mm -hmm. Maple played it too far up and got caught and punished, blew both of his summoner spells for that as well. Very, very well played then by Area of Effect. The Exhaust Course helped Mikasa. Nice ward hop gets away from the slow cocoon, will land, but do they have enough damage? They're gonna try for it. Q, E, Dash comes in. Kick will be almost enough damage. One more shot, there it is. Corpus Pops claims that one. And out they go from under the turret. So kills straight back and forth. Top lane turret went down for Dragon. Mid lane still fighting the Slushy. 300 health. Here comes Elvin. The, the flash pillar forced the flash out from Slushy. Still running the flash bomb. One He's more shot could from do it. There's not much mana available. Shockwave pulls him back. And there's Dota Way keeping him safe. Now in on towards Elements. The stun is available if they want it. They don't go for that just yet. Aranko pushed back. And looks like it's going to be calm for now. And now they group up in the middle. Maple Street, after respawning, has to go up against the Tristana. And now he's <laughs> in a numbers disadvantage again. Porus Pops on the wrong side of where he wants to be here. Now we can go ahead and clear out that pink. All four members of AoE grouped up in the mid. Slushy just backed, got himself the complete Morello Namicon. And across the board, very exciting game so far. But this is how teammate plays. They play hyper-aggressive, but they give up some kills. Yeah, sometimes it does backfire, but they're still holding on to that 2,000 gold lead that we saw a second ago. It's a couple of things traded back and forth. The dragon control, definitely the sole reason 
for that goalie, to be completely fair on this one. And it's it's uh, something we've actually seen a lot of, is Dodo will abandon Maple Street for the objectives. Back when they were playing LMQ, it was always Vasily versus Maple Street bottom 1v1. <laughs> Just highlight clips all day. They kept going at each other. It would be like Maple Street won that one, then Vasily, and back and forth, back and forth. Because Dodo is more objective-oriented as opposed to winning the lane flat out. He's like, I'll abandon you. You're fine. You're good by yourself. That time, Maple wasn't. Yeah, true. And it's against this late game composition. The teammate needs to get a bigger lead than they have right now, or AOE's gonna start running away with the game. Now AOE so far doing pretty well. Sightstone out for Elements, tier two, Gold Pretend as well. So this Trundle is getting fairly tanky. And it, it's honestly, it's a team with a large number of threats and actually a decent enough tank line with Mikasa, Aranko, and Elements all able to share that duty. So we might see this work out just well enough. Blue buff being stolen away. Looks like no one wants to stop this one, so AOE to let some of these moves happen to them because they've got to wait for the timer to keep ticking out. Still 2,000 gold as Porpoise Pops clears away the blue buff. And hey, they've got Ivan Rail for him Looking top. for elements, he's a little far up. And Kali actually has a decent amount of damage now. Who goes for the hot Ooh, kick? Though, back in Shockwave as well. Big damage comes through and down goes Support Trundle. Dodo in looking for, oh, the Q land oh, on the guard. Oh, has got to be careful. He's going to hit as well. He flashes. Ulti's going to miss there. And Dodo does not give them their second kill, but it does continue to give map control. Yeah, Slushy knew that the Flash wasn't up, communicated it to his team because Elements used Flash Pillar previously. So their Flash is basically on the same cooldown. If I don't have it, he doesn't either. Kick him right into the team. Now uh -oh, Renko faced Renko. against the wrong oh. bush. Oh, that Q missed though. Kali tries to ward hop away. Aranko heals, Purpose Pops comes in. Uh, but he wants to back off. The stun though, good damage comes through, but here's the rest of AoE. They're looking to turn this one around. Kali Trolls got to be careful. Has to flash away, but there's a stun in from Mikasa. Hits two. Zig the big damage. Kali Trolls got to be real careful. Has nowhere to go. Down he goes. Evan RL grabs the kill. Exactly what AoE wanted. See him sleeping in the trees there. <laughs> wow. So yeah, hits hits it for two right there. Once again, the savagery straight out from Redgar. Big thing there. You could see from California Troll's body language, he didn't want to fight that. Yeah, he he's kept back going out. back. He kept backing out, telling Porpoise Pops, I, I kind of don't want to go. Porpoise Pops keeps chasing. Cali Trolls actually says, all right, I guess it's time to go, but it's a little too late. Goes forward, blows his flash to try and get out, still gets stunned. That's the rough part of it right there, is the overgression can burn you. AOE collapse back in their own jungle very nicely overall, and in fact, that's the team with better ward coverage over the Northern Jungle, so it's a safer place for them to fight in. Yeah. Really only ward watches the top tri brush, which not a very high traffic area, so teammates got to be a bit more careful. Dragon up in about two minutes so far. That has been good for T8, but they've got to make sure they don't let things slip away. As soon as AoE holds a gold lead, I don't know if there's a way back in. Yeah. And we talked about Team A being a very aggressive early game team. And you can see California Trolls 2 1 2 on Lee Sin, 100% kill participation. But look at this Evan RL, he's up in CS over Maple Street currently. He's very close to having the highest CS in the game right now over Slushy. He's the guy who had that 10.4 KDA when they ended up going 2 2. Fourth best KDA in the previous season, 2 0 right now. Blade of the Rune King completed on Tristana. Once Tristana hits four items, she becomes an absolute terror in the game. You hit level 18, another big power spike. Probably the biggest power spike at the level 18 of any champion in the game because of that range increase. Also, the fact that she had six items is just ridiculous. You can't oh, yeah. even get to her, especially if you're Lucian. And that's going to be the difficulty. It's going to be it for the rest of the team to get down on this Tristana. Nice wave clear top lane to Wolf's Cloud removes all of those. And Mikasa gets a big share of experience. Porpoise Pop's going to walk by. Aranko's going to make himself known and reveals that there's probably a ward there as well, but may or may not matter. Maple Street is going to 1v1, but it's a one-level advantage. Evan Earl goes to me. Here's the teleport. Evan only has Flash to get out, takes the entire cooling. Slows come out. There's a jump in. Kali Troll. Oh. Ooh, nice Flash by Evan Earl. So now, on side, though. Yeah, he's got to be real careful. Goes through the jungle. They know which way he's gone, but only boots one. Continues to move on to the left. Oriana, Q. Oh, knocks back Kali Troll. Still not been hit. There we go. And that's going to be the assist coming through to Lee Sin for the shield as well. So Maple Street claims the kill. Aggression missed time from Evan RL. So Maple Street is used to being a duelist in the bottom lane. You can see it there, keeping his distance on Lucian. He's done that multiple times since we saw him, because Dodo just abandoned him. Basically, he's learned to fend for himself against other AD carry players. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that happen more this game, just leaving Maple Street on the island and having him try and duel as if he were a top laner. 
Sure. So far, so good for these guys. Level 7 to level, I believe, 8 for elements there. So overall, AoE found some good XP in the bot lane. Dukas is going to be careful, though. Ignite is on stun. Hits Lushi, but one hit from dead. It's going to be enough. Doesn't need the flash, but look to secure the kill anyway. Another kill comes in. Team 8, 6 to 3 now. And they're going to hold this mid lane, looks like, as well. It's fun stuff about Slushy is he used to be an AD carry player. And now he plays mid lane. That's what happened a while ago, actually. And then that's when teammates started to become such a terror and a threat of the team. When they moved him to mid and they picked up California Trolls in the top lane. And Slushy, fantastic mid player. To the point that Scar even gives him praise all the time. Yeah, and he's doing well for the team so far. 173 CS, 1 0 and 3 overall. Mikasa. Unfortunately, having a really rough start to this game. 1-3-1, one, and one, not the score he's wanted, mm. but again, it's still the clock here for Area of Effect. They've now dropped to a 4,000 gold deficit. Of course, Element's building his handcrafted team to try to get himself back in the LCS, of course, with the rest of his teammates. And they've had moderate success overall in the challenger scene, but this is, this is like the last test, the last big test they get this year. Yeah, and since Team 8 regard AOE is the second best challenger team. Does that mean they don't think there are any more threats after this game if they end up winning it? I, I don't see. know. <laughs> you, got, you got to keep in mind, right? Air of Effect made yeah. it to top eight, lost to Lalper, who lost to Coast. There's obviously a lot of good teams in the challenger scene that you have to give respect to. Steel does come out nicely done by Porvis. Pops grabs that one. Arenko, yeah, you know, just got to clear away these. No big deal. But that's the second blue of Steel in a row now. Dewolf's Claw hasn't held on the blue for a long time. Yeah. Maybe at all this game. Yeah, and he has the Athenes up against the Orion, so he's okay, but he could be a lot better. Be a lot better situation if he had the blue. Yeah, it's a bunch of golden XP at the very least. The buff, of course, itself. Quite nice mid turret under fire. Elements looking to zone back Slushi and Dodo, but there's enough players of teammate to take this turret down. 6 3 now, 4,500 gold lead with mid dead, and it's a 2 to 1 turret score. Dodo looking to get control over the jungle. He feels pretty confident here, puts the sweeper down. Elements can't get rid of that ward, though. Dodo protecting his children. The ward stays safe. It's the Dodo egg. Those are extinct. Don't be silly. Uh, Rengar wants a way in. Corpus pops off on the side. Can't find it, though. Aranko loses his second ulti cooldown now for no kind real game. Dodo spot. waits in the middle of the team, though. Goes in towards Elements. Shockwave does catch the port. Elements taking so much damage. Will he die? Yes, he does. The knockups continue to come through. Kali Troll's low on health. He gets... Oh, now he's gonna oh, maybe die. Him. Shield on himself. Mikasa now running away. That is a kill picked up for FNRL. 2-1 so far, though. Teammate are winning this fight, and they're pushing everybody out of the base. Flash Cocoon lands. The burst comes through. Pop makes it three kills. Now to Wolf's Claw wants to fire back. Can he find this one? There's minions in the way. Aranka now getting jumped on by Dota. Yeah, Wait, the there's the kill back in the AD carry. Wolf's Claw doing a lot here. Here. Can they find the rest? There's a rank of find another. Dota wait flashing the wall. He will get out, but it's two alive versus two alive. The Zig Zulti, one more hit. Dodo's still running away to Wolf's Claw. Flashes. Q misses. Satchel. Oh. One more Q will do it. Can he dodge? Is the E back up? One second. It's almost oh. back up. Can't quite get it to Wolf's Claw. Claims the kill. And actually, Area of Effect win yeah. that fight four to three. Four to three, but they're still down 5k gold at this point. Despite that victory, they still have a little bit of climbing to do. They get the flash out of Renko. Renko doesn't have ultimate, but the Orianna Slushi's ultimate only used on one person. They get elements out of the fight very early on, but Kali Troll's right here. I think he could have been healed by Maple Street. Yep, Maple had heal. Even then, it's very close. And then Maple ends up, they actually split here between the turret, and Maple dies. Just grouping up with Porpoise Pops. Trying to defend him, he gets picked up by the Wolf's Claw. Right here, Arenko actually still has the remaining duration on his passive so he can jump out of the bush and close the distance once again. But fighting the Rengar in the jungle and then having that split call on the turret, mm -hmm. not really what teammate wanted to be. Now, that away. was pretty unfortunate for those guys. And but AoE. Exactly. They take, coordinated. Exactly. It's a good, great advantage of that situation despite having to blow a flash and an ultimate at the start and losing elements. Sure. And they made it all happen, of course. So. AoE trying to hold themselves into this one. Bot turret taking a bunch of damage. They've got to be careful to not get ganked out of this one. Of course, there's no turret coverage at all. It's going to be a long road home. Maple Street wants yes, this red. one. Can you get the damage output here? Element's going to go into the front line, take a bunch of hits for that one. Going to get Evan RL out. Slushy's now in a really bad spot. Shockwave going to hit two, Evan but he will reset. trade his life for this one. Now, do they have the rest of this? El uh, Arenka running away. The kill does come through for Dota. The knockup there does not quite land. Nice escape by Evan RL. Maple. Can he make his way out? 
He has just two to one. red, but he's not able to close that distance. Cali Troll's on the other side, though. He would go for this. Oh, the flash out for FNRL, though. He's got to be pretty careful. Kicks, Wolf Slap back over the wall. The flash in from Maple Street. They claim the AD carry, but he's going to get this one. Now Mikasa comes in, does not land the stun. Dodo here to defend the team, and looks like that'll go pretty well for himself. FNRL dealing damage in the backside, but can't quite find enough. Jumps the wall. He will stay safe, but another kill now. 3-2. Teammate. These very aggressive and decisive skirmishes from teammate are where they excel. And AoE, they're still at that point where they need to get more items in this game on these champions that are just so potent later on. Slushy here ends up getting taken out by Evan RL, and Evan saves the reset until when the ultimate from Dodo comes out. It's actually a good double buff pickup there by Dodo, too. Keep himself safe. But then there's the chase down. Maple Street, they're looking for it, looking for it. But California Trolls comes from the left side at the top first. And he's looking for a kick on Evan RL, but Evan flashes. So instead of using uh, like a kickback or something like that, he decides to just go for the Wolf's Claw. Almost got the three-man stun there. That would have been huge. Yeah, a this, this is silly by Mikasa, though. He's walking into a two versus three. He's so willing to fight a battle that was already minus one. Actually, it was four to two overall. Yeah. I actually miscounted the kills there. So teammate getting an advantage. Dragon back up now as they sit six and a half thousand gold ahead. This is actually now a very large lead. They have continued to make good things happen. AoE still want to find the Maple, Maple Street. He's got to be real careful. Killing comes in, gets blown up though. 1v1. And now the battle will ensue. Dragon's still not dead. Pop stays for it. So the rest of this fight is a three versus five. Kali Trolls forced to run away. Solution grabs a kill into Aranko. Dragon finally goes to T8. But get Evan it. finds another kill now. This could be massive there. Dodge the cocoon. There comes the rappel. Oh, he, oh, he misses the rocket jump. And now this is a bad situation. And Porpoise Pops, can he get away from Elements? Looks like he will. And overall, two to four in this fight. Porpoise, the only one alive. Great pillar. Elements. This, this is going to be a kill. There we go. Picked up right there. So Dragon, but plus three in that fight for AoE. They chose it, and it worked out. Yeah. They still end up pretty much even because the Dragon got picked up. But still, really big. They get a turret, so that gives them that little bit of an advantage in goal. Now, pretty funny here. We see the duel come out off on the side where Evan RL just takes out Maple Street. And now the team is split again. The call from Porpoise is, I'm going to finish the Dragon. Slushy over here ends up getting a Renko, but gives up himself. And right here, I think, I think Elements shafts his own teammate, <laughs> Evan RL. He goes for the jump and the, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> elements. That's how you support. He's trying to give him a boost, but he just Jump back get Elements. On top. Didn't get him over the wall. Nice try, though. You can't jump off the pillar. Just let him do it himself. He wanted to, he wanted to buy time for his friend. It's one of the best pillars I've seen if it was an enemy Tristana. Nope, still best player I've seen. <laughs> Definitely screwed him over. That was amazing, though. That, that, was, that was pretty great. Yeah. I'm a fan. He, but if it had worked out, he would have just <laughs> sectioned off the, the rest of the members from reaching the Tristana mm -hmm. and then would have had that zone of slow. Mm -hmm. So the potential for the play was there. Definitely was, but you got to keep in mind as well, though, what's been happening in this game because where the gold goes is, of course, very important, and what the champions are also a big deal. So yes, Team Eight have done a great job of securing three to four dragons in a row now. They're up a turret as well, but you're seeing the area of effect so willing to brawl. Mm. They've made a couple of bad choices. Mikasa went in and died the last uh, two fights ago for no good reason, but. Uh, I'm always like, well, you're down 6k, and then they go for the fight, and it works out. Yeah. And it's keeping the gold closer than it would have been otherwise. So uh, I got to say, and, and of course, Tristana, that clock is ticking. Or uh, the Ziggs actually is massive. Death Cap's done Void Step soon. 5, 1, and 6. And he's showing up to all the fights, living up to the name of the team. It's causing that area of effect damage. Mm -hmm. But right there, when Evan RL was able to duel Maple Street, it's approaching that late game Tristana. T typically, people are like, oh, her mid game isn't that great. We're past that point now. We are, exactly. And, and, and the thing is, the, the build's even one that scales a little bit better just because Yomu's is good, but when it's not active, uh, then it's, it's not gold slightly gold, gold inefficient. Yeah. Um, and that is, that is a risk that Maple Street will run uh, because as the fight goes on a little bit longer, Rapid Fire is still going to be on for Tristana. And something to keep in mind, mid turret is going to be going down nicely played by AoE. Claim this one, putting it a little bit closer in gold every single time they make that good move. But now both teams have killed all three outer turrets. So this is where the map really opens up. And wards are now your big friend for vision. More so than your turrets being up, keeping track of the lanes. It's now how good is your ward coverage. Oh, they see this though, and Kelly, he's going for it. Wow, Evan Aral down to half HP for this one. Kelly Troll's got to be a bit careful, but looks like he stays safe. Just forces some basic cooldowns out, and Evan going to have to lifesteal. There are a lot of wards here covering the map for AoE. They're going after Maple. Wow, big damage compared to Varenko, though. Maple Street nearly dead on this one. He's going to have to run away from this one. Evan, 
actually fairly durable now. Teammate have to run away. They have to back off. Buy themselves sometimes, but AoE. They're approaching a lot of gold efficiency with these items and the fact that they're on these types of champions. Jax makes a lot of use out of the Trinity Force attack speed because of his passive in six. But look at that Dodo caught by Orenko. Jumps back, puts the ulti down. A lot of spell oh. burn for this one. There's no Mega in front of him just yet, so they will stay safe. Kalitos lands the Q. Does not follow. Teammate, though, they're so low on health. Dodo needs to go heal. There's nothing he can really do for his team if he stays up in front like this. And Subjugate keeps being used on Dodo during the team fights. Elements is using it strictly on him, trying to lower those resistances and make himself take it. Oh, Look at that. three oh, man my shot God. wave. Evan Arrell, the knockback almost takes him out. Elements forced to run away. Now, do they have the damage to make this happen? Shields himself, but it's not going to be very useful. That time's out doing nothing. Cali trolls one hit from Sunny Mikasa. Can't get that. Oh, out. he lands on Elements. He lands. Take it. Lee Syndrome goes in, finds it. Evan Arrell kites it back just barely, but a rank. Ranko gets stunned, the Flash Q not gonna land. Zigzolt, he claims some kills back, and look at that. Teammate overstay their welcome and go minus in the fight. Yeah, Cali Trolls. Ooh. Oh, they Down get the Wolf Claw. Shocks, and ah, oh, down they go, Aranko. Oh, he's, he's looking for something though. They're all very low. He Here goes Rango. Finds one, goes in for number two, but it gets stunned up down. He goes, trades it back. Looks like three for three overall. Bloodbath of a game. But they're not gonna be able to get anything from this because this top lane wave is pushing so far into teammates' tier two turret. And Mikasa reserved to just farming this bottom lane. And that fight was absolutely crazy from start to finish. You were talking about Dodo being very low. Perfect shockwave, the ball is sitting there. Goes inside of the the pit, makes it so that he can get a three-man shockwave. Cal Fortrolls goes really hard here. And he actually uses his Dragon's Rage and they get Mikasa very low. It's so tempting. He lands the Q actually onto Evan I saw around Elements, and his mind was telling him yes. <laughs> and his body was too. And he picks it up for himself. Think, don't get a Renko. So he actually loops back around, and man, the Mega Inferno Bomb coming up big onto Dodo there. Finally taking him out, despite being about one fifth HP the entire fight long. Great cocoon over the wall from Porpoise Pops. The Wolf's Claw saw it, but he was focusing on the culling and trying to dodge the shots from it, and pretty much just being led into it by Maple Street. Renko eventually picks up the kill for himself but a good counterplay back and forth there between the teams. Absolutely, man. These guys kiting back and forth and battles are hilariously awesome. 5.7 thousand gold puts Team 8 ahead. That number has stayed pretty stagnant for a while, which can be worrisome. Normally, 5,000 gold lead this, this early on, it's like, oh my gosh, they're crushing. But the problem is AoE have shown they can fight back. This gold lead, as we've said, is just from the Dragon Control, and it yeah. hasn't converted into much more for Team 8. Kelly Joel's splitting the top lane with teleport is going to create some pressure, but AoE looks like this dragon Dragon's is going to be theirs completely. Dragon's worth a little bit more at this point than that turret because of the level of the game. But what can they do? They can control this mid lane right here. This is not an easy rotation for AoE. Yeah, and the teleport is still available. Jax is going to come up. Mikasa is going to try to duel Kali Trolls. But it's just approaching that point where Jax can get, can do it. He can actually win that fight in a 1v1 straight up. Kali Trolls trying to come in from the side. Elements takes another slow. There's the push in mid tier two. Gonna be oh, rolling. Shockwave what? does not hit anything. Some rarer there from Slushi, and there comes the fight. Aranko on the front line gets a shield. Aranko one hit from dead. He out. goes down though. And now Wolf's Claws on the wrong side of the fight. Two kills picked up. Maple Street flashed the way. Yeah, now get Elements away from done as well. Uh oh, where is the Tristana? Finds Dodo. Gets a shield. Will go down though. Two to one plus two turrets. Will they keep chasing low health bars, but they can't keep going? Kali Troll split the fight in the back. Took a lot of damage from Evan RL and soaked it up for himself and then he got out of the fight with a nice safeguard. He also ended up getting a kill on the back line onto Orenko, but now they have to defend this. And they're only gonna be able to do it with just one person. There's not enough pushing no power push. just yet. There's no way they've healed in time. You really can't make that kind of thing happen. So AoE, you talked about it in the pregame as well. They uh, play a more defensive type of game plan. And uh, again, if you just hold on 15 more minutes, the game will kind of fall into your lap. Yeah. You, you do have to respect, as an AD carry, you have to respect a big Orianna, and that is uh, what Slushy has as a big Orianna. Problem is, Tristana <laughs> is one of the um, like least respect required AD carries because she's so large, because she's so safe. If you do get shocked with, you could rock jump out of it. And it's so hard to get the ball on to someone as long range as Trist that that's not necessarily that same kind of time bomb. Whereas, like, if you're a Sivir, you're going to yeah. be sad a lot. Yeah. 7, 3, and 4 on Evan RL, despite being down 7k at this point in the game. He's at 3 items. 
four is when it's just like she's already turned on at this point. Mm -hmm. She has to like rip the switch off the wall, completely going crazy in this game. Then six items, you're just like, wow. Yep. Yep. It's it's ridiculous how powerful she gets. And Ev in Evan RL's hands, he's definitely in a spot to hyper carry. Another thing though, they do have to wait it out for the rest of the team to get behind it, make sure that they can follow this up and close the game out for AoE. That's a big thing. Is they can get leads, they've been winning some fights, but can they get things off of it? You saw there, they won the fight, but they couldn't get any turret from it. And Renko is looking for something here, but Oh my gosh, look at the damage he takes right there. This is the kind of the problem is A, we don't really have a big tank like Ali's Renko coming in from the side. Added a brutalizer, Kelly Trolls lands the Q. Is gonna be able Oh he, he wants to go for Wolf Squad. Can he kick elements in the team? Yes he will. Now this poor support's on the wrong side of the fight, and he will go down one for zero. Now the front Dodo, line of though. Dodo is going to die, so these guys will trade supports. Mikasa, though, stunned up on the wrong side of this fight as well. In comes Cali Trolls. Has to jump back out. They're gonna trade oh, three top man. as well. But this could keep on going to Wolf's Claw. Gets cocooned up. He goes down. Only Evan is alive. Corpus Pop wants it. Mabel Street does too. Forces the flash. And now it's a three versus one on the map. In the previous fight, Slushy sombreroed his ult. Ultimate. This fight gives about two, three people inside of it, and it completely changes that backline damage. The flash forward just to reposition the ball was brilliant, and they get a turret for it and an inhibitor. They crack the base. This is the big thing for teammate. Now, this actually puts a much shorter timer on the game in terms of AoE. You've got to make really good choices over the next four minutes, or super minions and a combination of Baron pressure are going to rip this game apart. So, Team 8, they finally got the battle they wanted. They got the poke down on Aranko, who was too squishy for this one. Love that. that. again. He completely dodges the satchel charge, walking off to the side. He gets elements into the team. Dodo completely soaks the damage for as much as he can from Evan RL to make sure it's not on the back line. Kali re-engages on Mikasa, costing his own life, but barely gets out. The shockwave onto two people there. Lucky for Evan RL, he is able to jump out in time. If that had been a little bit sooner, it would have completely just yeah. Smothered it. Oh yeah, I mean it could have been it could have been game. Thirty minutes is pretty short on respawn time, but we all die at the same time when you're that close. It can Man. at least mean some Nexus turrets. So needs, be, needs to be a challenger fantasy. Cause look at all those assists. Oh man. <laughs> throughout teammate and yep. AoE. Oh sure. I mean their it's game is entirely team fights. Like they just keep grouping up and looking for ways to make plays. I mean teammate, they know they have to play aggressively. AoE realizes that, but they're so willing to fight uh, that occasionally they give uh, too big of advantages. Yeah. Um, something to keep in mind, eight to 9,000 gold now the lead for teammate. Again, still a 15% lead roughly is a pretty significant margin here. Looking to control the mid lane. Of course, Evan Rall still wave clearing, but you still got that lease and split push. Yeah, and we talked about teammate and AoE's objectives and their win conditions. Teammate, they needed to get an early game lead. They've accomplished that. They are almost, they're almost 10k up at this point. They have this big investment that they've made from the early game, and now, I would say that in terms of team fights, it's really who lands those ultimates on how many people. Because AoE's composition, just through and through, is very good. They have the gold on the right people, and despite being 9k gold down, they're still able to win a team fight depending on how many people get hit by a Ziggs, how many people get hit by Orianna. Oh, right now, no one got hit by that. Ziggs ulti is down. They had to use that to check on Baron, and they realized, oh, no one's on it right now. Or if you can get. Evan, that's another one yeah. too. Oh, sure. If you get to Evan then or zone over. him off for long enough that your front line goes down, then boom, it's fine. Oh, we'll see if they can do it. The problem is he's been pretty good about positioning. Only three deaths, lowest on his team, second lowest in the game overall. Blue buff contest going to come out. Nice smite there, goes to a rank to Wolf's Blop. He has a lot of damage. Careful, jumps back in, gets the Ooh. kick. Nicely done. Probus Pops, Probus Pops claims the kill, and that is Team 8. Creating Kick a lot of pressure on the map. Kicked it right into Elise's mouth. Yep. <laughs> Done. Eats the Yordles, apparently. Didn't know. But it's spiders get eats anything that's caught in its web. Nope. Doesn't even care. Eats God. it raw. Doesn't even have to wrap it up. Nope. That's fine. Things that happen. And now Team 8 are clearing away all the wards around Baron. It's a 5 on 4. 30, sorry, 28 seconds until the Ziggs comes back up. Dodo going to play uh, the buffer in the middle. There is a flash for Aranko. He could look for the seal. He will not be there Stone in control. time. The board is down. Uh -uh, it's going to be picked up. Nicely done there. That is Baron plus the kill. The flash away for Aranko. He's got to run. Yep. And Cali trolls, he's still pushing the bottom lane. Completely his style. He wants a solo push. He wants to be able to duel his lane opponent, which he can. He's level 18. Mikasa, 15. Has a huge advantage over him. 100 CS up. That is so substantial right there. And you're seeing Mikasa trying to catch up in items. Triforce 
almost a Rand Wins. Hasn't even tried starting on Ruin King, whereas you've got uh, Last Whisper and Randuins and Ravenous Hydra, and he's about to have either like a GA or a Banshee's Veil whenever he backs up next. Dragon picked up now as well, and this is now the gigantic lead for Teammate, where it doesn't matter if you are Tristana, everybody's so big on Teammate, they're just bigger than anyone. Yeah, and Teammate kind of don't want a team fight just yet. They've been losing or going even in some team fights. They win some of them, yeah. but the advantages that AoE ends up getting are based off of these team fights, because they just have flat out a better team fight composition at this point in the game. Now there's a lot of levels on Cali Trolls, just split push it, mm -hmm. and you're perfectly fine. You can cause a lot of pressure, then you group up for the team fight later, once you've gotten some objectives, or you put them in a catch-22 situation where they have to give up an inhibitor or a turret to you, but you'll lose the team fight or you kite backwards. There's a lot of things here that teammate can do and execute because they put themselves in a great position to do so. And AoE oh, have yeah. to play reactive still at the 37 minute mark. I mean, I feel like teammate could even just dive right now. They've got three Randwin Zomans and a Zonia's Hourglass. I don't know how much they could do that against a Trundle who will zone part of your team and then have the Tristana kiting backwards. It's I suppose, that's true. They are only two ranged champions. So and, uh, and the getting Ziggs through has is difficult. Too. It's oh, sure, really sure. Hard. It's hard to do. It's risky, and I don't know if they will do it unless they get a perfect shockwave. That would be the thing for me. And we'll see how they find their way in. Right now, the team largely grouped up in the mid lane with Lee Sin splitting towards the top. They've got some pink cords down to get rid of ward control. Kelly Joel's not looking to push in too heavily. No, he does. Oh, and jumps back out. Okay. Baits it. He got the e. with me. He Definitely is. Now. Of course, mid inhibitor had died a while ago, so there's no turret defending it, and Team 8 looked to continue their way in. You've noticed they're pretty heavy pink ward control to watch for Rangar flanks. They will see him coming before he reaches uh, leap range, and T8 could play around that. That way it blocks something out, and in comes some damage from Maple Street. This turret is, sorry, inhibitor is slowly dying. And at the same time, California trolls up top. If he gets some damage on that turret, he'll eat the stun. He's pulling his eye on Spartan here. Yep, he is trying to ignore Mikasa, but there's some uh, real damage coming through slowly, but surely. Inhibitor not at a half HP. Looks like teammate will be given this one, so that is the first inhibitor down. Big wave towards the bottom side if they want to deal with that one, or they could switch back to the top lane. Two thirds health on this turret here. It's the catch 22. You either lose top turret or you lose the inhibitor, and they lose the inhibitor, but now at the same time, they're going to start rotating up towards the top lane or push the middle lane out, back off a little bit, and see what they can get. They're going to just actually this. cut this wave. There's a huge wave down bottom, though. But they've done such a good job of controlling the ward coverage. They didn't get spotted as they made their way down towards this turret. Ziggs ulti is going to stop them, though. Slushy only half health. And the regen off Baron for a while. Wards go down. Rangar ulti goes to nothing. Uh, Aranko lands a root. That's all. He'll back off. It's okay. But yeah, as you mentioned, there's a giant wave bottom lane. There's a bunch of gold available to teammate if they want it. Yeah. Okay, so California Troll is going to go back. He's going to go ahead and clear that wave out, get all that gold for himself. He's almost at six items here. Once he clears that wave, he might actually be at that point. And then he has teleport available too. So that's the right person to send back. And all of the team is actually just sieging up, making sure nothing else passes. And they're just trying for it right now. Of course, Cali Trolls with teleport can join them. And teammate knows to play just a little bit safely here. 30 seconds left on Baron buff. Elixir's timing out soon as well. So this happy time of the siege will be over soon. But they've gotten a 14,000 gold as a result of everything. Either way, and here they do back off. No objectives coming up just yet. I mean, maybe they're on red buff, but not big objectives. And they have just the inhibitor to show for it. And Evan RL, they've basically been avoiding his team fight presence for a long time now, and they're going to see what they can do right now. Well, some decent damage goes through to Ranko. The Wolf's Claw actually Ooh. dangerously low. That culling kind of snuck up on him there. Ranko's already popped his ulti one more time. Still has not found an easy way in. Does get up Corpus Pop, and the team goes back to the top lane there. Look to back to this one. Lee's Cali's still not part of the side. fight. Dodo 8 in the front lines. This turret will be going down rapidly. Maple Street does claim that one, but here comes the fight. Here comes Cali. This is the one. This means everything. Cali is going to kick Evan Aral. Exhaust on as well. Forced to jump out of the fight, but Maple Street chases down. Gets the kill after the stun. Slushi out of the fight as well. One for zero so far. Mikasa, one hit from dead, has to run. Also, now elements the front line. Trundle forced to flash away from this one. One hit from dead does go down to Q from Cali. Trolls also the Rangar. This is going to be game. Teammate finally claw their way through. 40 minutes in. And they're going after this kill right now. Porpoise Pops and California Trolls, they're having that little bit of back and forth. Are we going to do it or are we not going to do it? California Trolls makes the executive decision that Dwarf's Claw is his if he can get to him and finish him off. Finally gets yeah. it. There we go. Team 8. They're going to make it to the round of 8 for the second time. They lost there previously. Did the team lose at 8 or win at 8? Well, it looks like they made it to the round of 8. That's the important thing here for themselves. 41 minute game. Early game. Well, at least